Hey there, welcome to SAS TV. In this video, we will discuss about database first approach to connect database to a .NET Core solution. We will start with creating the database and its tables. We will also see where the create and insert query scripts for the database and table is there in the scripts folder. Next, we will install the required NuGet packages. We will then discuss about the scaffold DB line to move the tables to the solution. And finally, we will discuss about the repository class changes. Starting with the SQL database and table creation, let's first understand what all database and tables will be created. So as you see here, we will create a database employee management system, aka EMS. Inside this, we will have three tables, starting with the main table employees, which will have all these columns, ID, name, date of birth, till updated on. And if you notice, employees table has a department ID column, which is a foreign key for employees, but the primary key for departments. So that's how we will get to know the name for the particular department the employee is working. It's the same for competencies as well. We have this competency ID column and it is the foreign key for employees table. And if you notice the connection, it eventually goes to the competencies table ID column, which is the primary key for this table. So this way, we'll get to know the competency for that particular employee, right? All right. Now that we know what needs to be done, let's get into action. So here I am in SSMS, we will be using SQL Server databases. If you don't have SQL Server instances created and SSMS installed in local server, click on this card. Alright, I'll use the default instance for SQL Server that is localhost. So I'll click on connect, open up the databases folder. I already have two databases but we can overlook this. Okay, alright. So let's start with the creation of database first. Before I start, I want to let you know there are two ways to create these databases and the tables. The first one is to click on buttons in the UI or the other way is to just run a script. So you will find that query script in the scripts folder of course, we'll discuss about that later. Let's get started. So in the databases, right click and click on new database. We'll give the database name as EMS, which means Employee Management System. Okay, and here uh, let's go to the very right. And if you notice here, it says the path is C program files Microsoft SQL Server. Instead, we will change this to a personal folder. So let's scroll down and click on this. Let's find out that folder. Yeah, so this is the one. I'll click on OK. The first one is the database, and the second one is the log. So we need to make sure both of them are in the same place. We click on OK and then click on OK again. Alright, the database is created now. Let's start creating the tables. Click on this plus button. Click on tables and right now you won't see anything here. So in here, right click in the tables part, click on new and then click on table. SSMS is asking us to provide all the column names and when we save at that point of time, it will give us the option to provide the table name. So let's start with the columns. We'll start with the employees table. So let's start with the ID. So ID and the data type will be int. Right. This won't be null. And this will be a primary key. So let's click on set primary key. And make sure we have enabled the identity part here. So in here, in the identity specification, select this is identity and make it yes. What this will do? Well, if you have seen my older videos, you will remember it will just simply increase the count for the ID on every new row insertion in this table, right? So we'll keep this as it is. The ID's value will increment by one and it will start from the value one. So let's keep it as it is. Let's start with the next one. We'll give name. This will be back here and let's give 50 as max. Then this won't be null. The next is date of birth. Let's give this date. We can give it date time, but let's keep it here. Uh, again, this won't be null. The next one is email. This will be bear care and bear care 50 should be good. Again, it won't be null. The next one is date of joining. This will be a date again. Again, it won't be a null. So here is the thing, if you remember in the code, we had this department and competency as strengths, right? 
But in here, when we are creating the tables, we'll keep separate tables for department and competency. So here instead, I won't give the name department. Instead, I'll give the department ID and then we'll connect the employees row with the department table. Okay. Let's make this as end. This one can null again. The next one will be competency. The same for competency as well. This will be end and not string. And again, it won't be null. And finally, for best practices, let's do this. Let's say create it on. Let's give this date time and update it on. And again, let's give it date time. This will be nullable. If, if we want, we can add it from the code, else it is fine. Okay, so we have the employees table now. That's really awesome. But again, um, we do need to add the foreign key for department and competency, right? But we don't have the tables yet. So let's do one thing. Let's quickly go again here. Again, from the tables, let, let's open up a new query, right? Let's start with the department table. We'll start with the column ID. Again, it will be an int, not null, primary key. Where is there in the specification? Yeah, here it is. Let's, let's make this to yes. The next part will be department. Actually, let's make it new. Where care, I guess 50 should be enough. Again, for good practices, created on, updated on. Oh, I forgot to remove the null for this. Okay, so let's save the table name as department and click on OK and that will do. Before we close off this query window, let's discuss about this thing. So there will be no duplicate names for a particular department, right? Hence we have an option in SQL Server. The name is unique key as the name suggests. If we apply it in a particular column, it will make sure none of the rows have the same name. Let's apply it for the name column. So in here, I'll right click and then I'll select index or keys. Here, we'll click on add and as you see here, it says ix. It means unique. The short form for, for unique is ix, like pk is primary key. This is ix and here in this ix department, we'll select this column and then select name. Let's keep the sort order as ascending and when we click on OK, this will make sure there are no duplicates in the department table for the column name. Okay. So click on close now and save it. I have clicked on the control S right now. Now let's come in here in the employees table and now is the time to add the foreign key relationship. So the way we have used for unique keys, we'll use the same way for adding the foreign key relationship. Right click here and click on relationships, click on add and this will add one foreign, foreign key for table 1 and table 1. So obviously we have to change it. Click on this table and columns specification. Click on this triple dots. So here is the thing. The department ID is, is the primary key for department table, right? So in here, in the primary key table, we'll select department and in here, we will say ID. In the foreign key table, which is this table, employees table, the foreign key needs to be the department ID, right? That's that's what we are connecting. So we'll select department ID, click on OK, and then close. We'll do the same thing for the competency table. So let's fast forward. Open up a new table tab. Mention all the fields for this table. In this case, ID, name, created on, and updated on. Let's save the table now. We will name it competency. Now click on OK. Actually, no. Table names should be included. So we will name it competencies just like we did for departments. Let's click on rename and update the table name. Alright. Now right click on tables folder and click on refresh. This will update all the table changes. Now click on this plus button. Right click on columns and click on new column. This will open up the same table query. But this time, the table name will be competencies and not competency. Let's close this competency window as we don't need this anymore. Fast forwarding. Alright, set the ID as primary key. Good, identity specification is already set. Adding unique key constraint for name. Saving the table. Now go back to the employees table. Add foreign key relationship for competency ID. We have added for competency as well. 
now now the unique key part what we did for competencies and department the same thing needs to be done for the name and email for this table so let's do it as well select the column here and select name click on ok again click on add select email click on ok and close all right click on save and click on yes that's it we have created the three tables employees departments and competencies we'll come into this tables right click and click on refresh all right now we'll open it up and we'll see three tables and if you notice here you can see all the columns here all the keys and all the indexes which means like a unique key and everything so yeah that's pretty much for the creation of tables as well the next part will be importing some data into this tables there are again two ways to do it the first one being we can right click on the table and click on edit top 200 rows and then we can simply add rows but that's too manual right it will take a lot of time so instead i already have the insert query scripts and we'll use those again you can use the same and you will find it in the scripts folder all right now let's switch to the visual studio instance and here in the solution right now we are able to see all the layers if you notice we are in the branch part 9 database first approach so you have to use the same branch right now you're able to see the solution explorer with all the layers in here instead we'll change the view for the solution explorer to make it a folder view. So to do that we'll click on this and if you see here it is opting me for the folder view option i'll select this and as you see i have the folder view option enabled now so if you open up the scripts folder you will see something called ems.sql let me open this up this is a sql file all right the script has opened and if you notice here you will have all the options here for example it will first check if the ems database is there and if not it will create a database the next it will check is all the tables if there is no tables for competencies departments and employees it will create all these tables with all the foreign keys primary keys the identity and everything and finally we have the insert queries for competencies departments and the employees make sure you execute the entire file all at once because if there is a change in flow this script might not work so let's open it up in ssms so as you see here there are no data in this table right now let me open up this file Before I run the script file, let me do one thing. Let me actually delete this entire database. So let me click on close existing connections as well. What we'll do is we'll open up this EMS file again. Uh, I believe right now this file won't be connected. Let's do one thing. Let's quickly reconnect once. Let me open up the file one more time. EMS. Now that the database and the tables for EMS are not there, let me run all this script in here. I'll click on execute. And if you notice, all the rows have affected. Now let's quickly go refresh here. We'll see the extra database EMS. Open up the tables. Let's quickly check for competencies. If we see in the indexes, we should see the unique and the primary key. Super. In the key section, we should see the primary and unique key. Awesome. In the departments, it should be the same. For employees, it also should be the same. We have the foreign keys for employees as well. All right, let's quickly do a select query. So, for competencies, departments, and employees. And I, I hope you have already seen it. So, for competencies, it's here. For departments, it's here. And for employees etc we have five rows of data for all three tables okay now that we have created the database and the tables and we have also inserted the data for all the tables the next step will be to use scaffolding in the code base to load the ems database into the solution all right i'm going to stop the video here we are already out of time let's finish up the next part related to the code base in the next video that's it for the first part if you like this video please click on the like button if you want to support us, please click on the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.
Tell me pretty lies. Look me in the face. Tell me that you love me.